if you're also suffering from a lot of stress and problems during your PhD, then this video will really help you because I'll pinpoint the main reasons why these problems happen and I'll show you as well how to solve these problems. So I'll break down the problems that PhD students suffer from into five big issues that I've seen across the board from having worked with over 270 PhD students on my program PhD Accelerator and I have really seen it all. You know, I've been able to help those PhD students as well overcome these problems and I was lucky myself that, you know, my PhD was a much smoother journey so I was also able to develop some really good solutions to those problems. So in this video I'm gonna present both to you the problems and also how to solve them so hopefully you will no longer have to suffer from these issues after watching this video. But before we do that, if you're new here, my name is Marek Tichkovek and I run Academic English Now where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers for top journals in the field. So what are the main reasons why so many PhD students, but really so many PhD students, suffer through the whole PhD, they're not able to finish it, they postpone it, they can't publish papers, you name it. I think the first main reason is a lack of a clear plan. Usually what happens when you start a PhD? You have a meeting with your supervisor. What does your supervisor tell you? Well, you're a PhD student now, you should be independent. Go and develop your own plan. But you're like, I've never done a PhD, mate. How am I supposed to know what the plan is? Well, the supervisor says, well, how am I supposed to know? You're a PhD student, be independent, go and develop your plan. And I mean, th there is a grain of truth in it. You know, after all, you're no longer in primary school. You should think independently for yourself and it's your research, it's not your supervisor's research. But at the same time, it's really, it's a really stupid piece of advice. It's a really stupid one. It's nonsensical because clearly some people have already done a PhD and some people have whizzed through it with no problems and published five papers. There are people like that. I've trained some people like that as well. So clearly, you, there is a plan. Some people have a better plan and some people have a really shit plan, right? So you can learn from those people that have an amazing plan and follow in their footsteps. So that's really the first problem, a lack of a clear plan at the outset. And you know, when you're starting or even if you're like in the middle of your PhD, you really need to plan what you're going to do because your PhD will go like this. So you really want to specify, you know, when you're going to be reading the literature, when you're going to be writing and you know, when you're going to do your research and don't think that you can just read the literature and think about what you're going to do for like two years because then you're going to be in deep trouble. This brings me actually to the second problem, which is postponing stuff, right? A lot of PhD students have this idea that, oh, you know, the first year is just kind of like, for f you know, just feeling, feeling the ground and, you know, reading the literature just to find out what I'm going to do. I still have three years, I'll be fine. You won't be fine, I promise you. That's how problems start. So a lot of PhD students kind of postpone, especially the writing, because a lot of you guys hate to write. And you just keep on postponing it. Oh, I can't write now because I haven't read enough. Or I can't write now because my methodology is not ready. I can't write now because I don't have the results yet. And then year three kicks in and you haven't written a single page and you're in deep trouble. Right? and you don't even know how to write because you've never practiced it. So postponing is a big issue, especially postponing of writing, right? And also thinking, you know, having this delusion that you always have time, right? And I understand that writing is difficult and that you have a lot of other stuff that you need to take care of, but postponing is the quickest way to failing your PhD, believe me. Those people who succeed, they start writing on day one and they write regularly so that you know by the time you're designing your study you've already written a good draft of a literature review maybe you've even written a draft of a review paper right and then as you're designing your study you can be writing up the methodology you don't have to wait for two years to write it up right and then you know when you when you go and collect your results you can, for example, be working on a review paper and trying to publish it. So that by the time you get your results and you analyze them, the only thing you need to do really is to present your results, right? And that's it. But the problem is that because of this postponing, by the time people collect results, they have written how much? Usually zero or a couple of pages and they don't know how to write. So stop postponing. That's the second reason. 
Now, a third big reason is worry, stress, kind of anxiety, emotions, right? And the, the main reason why a lot of people feel so stressed is that, you know, they think about situations which they cannot control. So we as human beings, our brains are designed so that we are more likely to think about, you know, possible negative things, possible dangers and risks that might happen. And from an evolutionary perspective, if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Because if you were a caveman or a cave woman going around your business 10,000 years ago or a million years ago, right? It was probably better to be scared of risks and dangers that might happen, like a tiger attacking you, right? Because if you weren't sufficiently scared and aware of it and thinking about it constantly, then you'd be eaten and your offsprings wouldn't be here today watching this YouTube video, right? So kind of, it, it makes sense from an evolutionary perspective, but now in the 21st century, it's the cause of a lot of anxiety. Like our thoughts just go like, you know, thinking about things that might happen, right? Like, well, what will my supervisor think about this? They might hate it. What if I start writing it and I can't finish? Well, what if my paper gets rejected? There are a million possibilities and, and risks and negative thoughts that go through our heads. The thing about them is that they haven't happened yet. They might not even happen and they are beyond your control as well. So try to divide you know, the things and the world into two areas. One, things that are beyond your control, you cannot control, and things that you can control. And you wanna focus on the things that you actually can control and maximize positive action on those things that you can control. Now, the fourth reason why a lot of PhD students really suffer is, you know, inability to structure the research ideas um, logically and express them in appropriate academic language. And I think one of the reasons for that is that they don't get enough practice. And the reason for that is that they postpone the writing indefinitely because they think they can spend the whole time in the lab reading all sorts of stuff, right? And they also don't get enough feedback, which I'll come back to in a second, right? So what you need to do is, first of all, use models, right? So take a look at other successful PhD students in your department, successful PhD theses that have recently been defended, maybe even other, under the same supervisor and analyze them. You know, if you're writing the methodology section, take a previous thesis or a previous research paper from a good journal and analyze how they wrote the methodology section. How did they structure it? What was the first element, the second, the third, the fourth, right? And then more specifically, how is each paragraph structured? What language do they use, right? And can I use the same language? Most of the time you can, you know, all those phrases um, that are specific to a particular field, write them down and, and develop a list of language that will be useful for you when you're starting to write. And then also, practice writing. I mean, like with anything, like with riding a bike, probably the first time you sat on a bike when you were like three or four years old, you fell down and you hit your head and maybe you started crying. And that's what happens when we start writing a, a research paper for the first time. You know, our research paper breaks down, we fall down and we want to cry. But the second time, the third time, the fourth time, it, it becomes better and better and better, right? So you need to practice. And what you need to do as well is to become aware of the mistakes that you're making and keep a list of those mistakes so that whenever you're revising a paper or writing it again, you can try to eradicate those specific problems that you've identified. So that's reason number four. Now, the fifth reason is lack of feedback and guidance, usually from the supervisor, right? And I don't, I don't want to kind of, you know, blame supervisors across the board here or anything like it. My supervisor was an amazing person and he was always there ready to give me some feedback and criticism and all that. But a lot of the PhD students that come to me to work with me on my program, PhD Accelerator, when I ask them, you know, what, what is your main problem? Like usually the first thing that most people say is lack of feedback. Look, I don't, I don't get feedback. I can meet my supervisor once every two months and the feedback I get just doesn't help me, you know? And this is usually the thing, that supervisors are amazing at pointing out, you know, sort of problems with the content, with the methodology. They can guide your study in terms of, 
you know, how this study should be conducted in terms of the content, the literature, because they're experts in that area. But believe me, over, after coaching over 270 PhD students, I've seen a lot of feedback from supervisors on the writing. And unfortunately, a lot of the times, the feedback goes something like this. This paragraph is not logical. Make it more logical. But, you know, I tried making it logical. Well, what does it mean that it's not logical? Can you tell me step by step what I need to do? I mean, I don't want you to write the paragraph for me. I want to write it myself. But can you please tell me what I'm supposed to do? And this just happens so often with all sorts of aspects of writing. Like, you know, another common feedback is like, your language is really informal. Make it more academic. Yeah, but how? Well, what am I supposed to do, right? So that's the fifth main reason, lack of clear feedback and infrequent feedback. Sometimes, you know, supervisors want to see your paper or your thesis when it's done, right? They don't accept kind of work in progress. But how are you supposed to learn if nobody gives you feedback on your work in progress? You know, what's going to happen is that you're going to spend two months writing 10 pages or 20 pages and then you're going to hand them in and they'll be destroyed, right? But if you get feedback on a weekly basis, right, then what's going to happen is that after two months, when you hand in those 20 pages, they will be almost good to go. So you will have wasted less time and your supervisor is wasting less time as well. And everybody is happy. So these are the five main reasons why I think a lot of PhD students really suffer with the PhDs. And if you need help with any of those, if you would like to publish papers regularly, if you want to get ongoing and clear feedback on your writing, then you should definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team so that we can learn a little bit more about your current challenges, about your goals, and then devise a personalized strategy, a personalized plan for you that will help you to achieve those goals further. And then we can see how we can work together more closely. And if you're interested in that, the link to book that free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.